this video, we're going to work on modeling multiplying fractions together. So when you multiply fractions together, sometimes a lot of students are stumped if the answer gets bigger or smaller than the original fractions that we start with. So hopefully visually you'll understand why our, your answer actually gets smaller when you multiply two fractions together. So here's our first example, one half times one quarter. When you multiply fractions together, you're always going to draw one box. So my suggestion is make sure you draw a nice size box so you have plenty of space to work in. And just like if we had a box like this, and if I told you the dimension this way was 4 and this way was 3, you would tell me if you wanted to find the area of it, you'd multiply 4 times 3 and get 12. I can show you visually that if I cut this box into four pieces going this way and I cut it into three pieces going the other way. If we end up counting up how many boxes we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve boxes. So we use that same concept of dividing something in and counting up how many boxes we have over here when we multiply fractions. So in one direction I'm going to have one half, and in the other direction I'm going to have the one quarter. So I'm going to start by drawing, taking my box, and I'm going to divide it in two pieces. Because remember the denominator, ta denominator tells you how many pieces, how big the pieces are going to be, and the numerator tells you how many of those pieces you have. So I'm going to divide this in the middle, so I have two pieces going this way, and I'm going to have one of them. So I'm going to color in this one side over here. And it's a good idea when you're multiplying fractions that you have more than one color with you. So maybe you use a pencil and a pen or you use some colored pencils. So I'm going to make my one quarter in blue and I'm going to divide it going the other way. So that means that I need four, I need to divide this into four pieces. So I have four pieces, and now I'm going to get one of them. So I'm going to color in one whole piece going the other way, looking at the blue. So the area where this overlaps, where the red overlaps with the blue, right here, this is actually my answer. So this tells me that out of all of these boxes here, I have one box that's colored in, out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes in all. So the answer to one half times one quarter is one eighth. Now one eighth, if you imagine that you have a pizza cut into two pieces, that's an awful huge piece of pizza. And if you have a pizza cut into fourths, the answer gets a little, they're a little smaller. So if I multiply those together, if I get one eighth, now imagine in your head a pizza cut into eighths. That's quite a bit smaller than the pizza that's cut into halves or the pizza that's cut into fourths. So when you multiply two fractions together, your answer actually gets smaller. And if I were to do the problem out the traditional way, one half times one fourth, remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together. So one times one is one, and you multiply the denominators together, 2 times 4 is 8. So no matter how I do this problem out, whether I do it visually and get 1 eighth, or if I do it out the traditional way and get 1 eighth, you get the same answer. But this is, I like doing it out visually so you can visually see why the problem, why your answer gets smaller, and also how you get the answer. Let's try this one over here. So we have 1 third times 3 fourths. So I'm going to start with a nice big box. One box for multiplying. And this way I'm going to have one third, and this way I'm going to have three fourths. So to divide my box, I'm going to look at my denominator and that's going to tell me thirds. So that means three. So I'm going to divide this into three pieces. Don't worry about if your answer, if your drawing isn't perfect. And I want to have one of them. So I'm going to color in this one over here. All right. 
and now going the other way, I'm going to divide it into thir into fourth, excuse me, because the denominator is four. So I'm going to divide it into four pieces. And my numerator tells me that I'm going to have three of those pieces. So here's one. Here's two. And here's my third one. So again, that area where they overlap, right here, this tells me the answer. So that means I have one, two, three pieces colored in out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve pieces. Now remember that could be simplified because three goes into both of them, so three goes into three once and three goes into twelve four times. So you could either say three twelfths or one fourth. And again, if we were to do this problem out the traditional way, you would start with one third times three fourths. I'm going to show you a neat little trick. If I look diagonally and the numbers have, if, and they have something in common, they both can be divided by, like in this situation, three and three. Three can go into both of them. Three goes into three once, and three goes into this one once. By doing that, I end up getting the simplified answer to start with. And one times one is one, and one times four is four. Let me just show you, it really does work. If you didn't do that diagonal simplifying, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12, which would simplify to be 1 fourth. So no matter how I go about doing the problem, whether I show it visually, I do the diagonal simplifying in the traditional method, or I, I just multiply and simplify my answer in the end, I get the same answer every single time. Now here I'm going to do a problem that is a, a mixed number. So in other words, I have a whole number multiplied by a fraction. So like the other problems, I'm going to start by drawing a box. So here's my first box. And I know that I need halves, so that means I need to divide them into two pieces. So, in my fraction here, my numerator tells me that I'm going to have one of them. So this takes care of this part of my number. But what about this part of my number? A whole number represents a whole box. The entire thing. And so since I divided this one into two, I'm going to divide my whole into two as well. But this time, instead of only getting part of it, we're going to color the whole thing in. Because we have the whole box. I'd like to point something out, else out to you at this moment. To turn one and one half into an improper fraction, you know that you take the denominator and multiply it by the numerator, I mean by the whole number, so two times one is one, plus this one up here makes three halves. Look at this, we have one, two, three pieces that are cut into halves. I'd also like at this time to just draw this over on the side and remind you that that right there represents one, and this right here represents, if you had the entire box, another one. That'll come in handy in a little bit. So here we have one and one half. So now to do our one third, I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide each of my box into three pieces because our denominator tells us how big the pieces are going to be. And our numerator tells us how many of them we're going to have. And so we're going to have one of these three pieces. And so that means that the answer is right here 
where the whole thing overlaps, where the red and the blue both overlap. So that means the answer to this problem is one, one, two, three pieces that are cut into, now this is where it gets a little tricky. Make sure that you look at just the one box, not both of the boxes together, just the one box to figure out what the denominator is going to be. And the denominator is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Which could be simplified to be one half, because three goes into both of them. And the reason why we're only going to look at the one to figure out how many boxes there are is because we have two boxes here. It doesn't matter how many boxes you have, each of the boxes, each of the holes are cut into six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that tells us that the denominator and the number that overlap and are colored in, one, two, three, tells us the numerator. And again, if you were to do this problem out the traditional way, you'd have one and one half times one-third, you'd change one and one-half into a mixed number, I mean, into an improper fraction to have three over two times one-third. You can do the sideways simplifying. Three can go into itself one time. One times one is one, and two times one is two. And there's my answer, one-half, which is exactly the same answer that we got down here, both visually and through the traditional method. So the big take-home message here with multiplying is you draw one box. One way you divide it for the first fraction, the other way you divide it for the second fraction. The area that overlaps tells you the numerator. The number of boxes in all tells you the denominator.